should be going live. Oh, we are live. So. Just wait for somebody to come in. I'm early, but I wanted to make sure. Oh, hey, good to see you too. I'm uh, starting a little early because I had difficulty last week, and so I thought I'll just start early and talk to anybody that wanted to ask the question. So if you have a question, go ahead on and type it in. Turn the sound down. Good. Okay, that is okay. I was here with you last week and you are coming in clear. Okay, thank you. Hey there. Hi, Betty Jones. Hi, Mrs. Y. I started a little bit early, so we're not going to really get into the procedure until um, 7 o'clock. Hi, Lolita. I think I'm seeing that right. Maybe I need to put on my glasses. I think that's worse. <laughs> Greetings, Louisiana Gardening Guru. Thank you for coming in. Let's see if I can get this on my laptop. And that way I won't have to be straining. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. And I got to get the comments. Got it. The more I do this, the better I'm going to get at this, Lolita. Hi, Linda Maxi. Good to see you. Carolyn Boyd. Hi. I'm telling you, since we've been uh, quarantined during this pandemic, I have done a lot of things I didn't think I could do. Um... Usually I have my grandchildren or my son to come over and help me in the food forest. But I mean, this time of year is a lot of work to be done because you're transitioning from one season to another and everything is bursting with life and it's just so much work. But I, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I did a lot of work on my own. From the ground up, hi. Hi, Tommy's Carolina Homestead. You said you were coming. Thank you. We're early. We're about, what, 17 minutes early, but we're just going to chit-chat. If anybody has a question, feel free. Hey, Nick, from the middle of the map. You can't stay, but you wanted to say hi. Thank you for showing some love. I appreciate you. Alufun Maleo. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Thank you so much. Hi, Josie. You're a new subscriber from Georgia. Happy to have you here. Miss Kales, 74. You're not late, Miss Kales. We're early. Because last week I had difficulty, technical difficulty. Some of it on my end. Some of it with YouTube. And I'm going to blame my Wi-Fi. So I came in early just so that I can... Test everything out, so I'm glad you're here. Lady Sings the Blues. I love your name. Hi, Miss MB. Tommy's Carolina Homestead. Thank you so much. Deborah Brown from Highland, Texas. All right. Oh, Tommy's Carolina Homestead. Thank you so much. 
Hey there, fruit gardening. Good evening. You know I'm always happy to see you. I started a little early, so we're going to actually get into the live chat at 7, but I just wanted to come on and make sure everything was okay, because I'm telling you, last week, that was a trip. Louisiana Gardening Guru, I'm really enjoying the pearls, Miss Cheryl. Thank you. You all don't know how much your support means to me. I'm um, an old lady. I'll be 66 years old in a couple of months. And I spent all my time in my gardening. And with the pandemic, I haven't been able to socialize or spend time with my grandchildren. And so my YouTube gardening family has been my lifeline. It's what kept me sane throughout all of this. Miss Cheryl, my neighbor wants to bless me with a piece of her peach tree. However, it is so hot here in New Mexico. That is not, oh, oh, thank you. Um, the only thing I can tell you about the peach tree is they can give you a branch, but you have to graft it to a root stock. I'm almost certain that you can't just root a branch of a peach tree. Yes, you are full of knowledge and wisdom, so thank you for sharing. You keep it to you could keep it to yourself. Yeah, you know what? Let me share a story with you all. My sister-in-law, bless her heart, she has passed away. But she gave me a recipe for this delicious uh, cake. It was called Japanese fruit cake. Hi, Green Organic Love. I need your help, Green Organic Love. I'm trying to put moderators, um, set up moderators, and that's the only thing that I haven't been able to do. So if you would email me, I'll give you my number. And if you would please, please, please find it in your heart to um, help me set up moderators for my channel. I would appreciate it. Have you ever had a plant breaking hair? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've had, I have a lot of branches of my tomato plants to break in half. Some branches can be rooted, but I have so many tomato plants that I don't really need them. So email me and let me know what broke and I'll give you some advice. Thank you, Green Organic Love. My children usually help me with everything technical and my son-in-law, that's what he does for a living. He does um, wiring for computers and hospitals and I mean, just everything, school districts. But since I've been quarantined, um, I haven't had anybody in my house since the last of February. White Flowers Homestead, thank you. We appreciate you coming. Click the three dots and select the moderators. Okay, your comments are not showing up with three dots. Somebody told me that. Okay, let me let me see here. Here's three dots. Mute microphone, share. Nope, it's not coming in that way. I may have to do it. The th Okay, I see three dots. Hold on, who told me that? Okay, got it. Thank you. You know you were going to be one green organic love. And where is bare fruit gardening? I'm not asking. I'm telling you, you're going to be one of my moderators. <laughs> Can't turn the old lady down. Okay. I want people that I've been, you know, knowing for a while. Somehow I was able to add Lad Farmer 73 uh, on my laptop, but then when I tried to put in another person, it wouldn't let me do it. Where is Nick Thomas? Is he still here? The middle of the map? When he, he's now a moderator. Okay. So my moderators, if we get any cheese sandwiches, and you guys know what they are, who they are, because we had uh, a couple of them last week. So if we get cheese sandwiches, just take care of it. Block them, please. 
I don't know why these people are sitting in their mother's basement wearing 800 pounds and I don't, you know, and eating cheese sandwiches, then come on these chats and try to stir up trouble. It's really sad. I pray for them, but in the meantime, we are about being self-sufficient and preserving what we grow so that we don't have to be in lines at grocery stores or dependent on anyone. So we don't have time for that mess. So we're going to get rid of those. Yeah, take them out, Green Organic Love. I love it. <laughs> Miss MB, you made them one too. What is that? I made a cheese sandwich, a moderator? No, I don't think so. <laughs> we don't have time for that. That's right, Bear Fruit. Need me to be Kiki Shepherd. Escort them up the stage. I don't want you to be Sam Man Sam's. On Showtime at the Apollo. <laughs> I love it. Okay, it's 6.50. Do any of you have any pre-canning questions? Today's topic is Hot Pockets. That's right. Cheese sandwiches are Hot Pockets. Today's canning demonstration will be the actual physical part of the canning procedure for applesauce. Now, tomorrow is Tuesday's fruit. I didn't think to tape, you know, what I was doing when I made the applesauce, but I have more apples here and I'm gonna make some more tomorrow and that will be Tuesday's fruit. Can you can without the big canner? What do you mean, the pressure canner, Tommy? Hey, Lead Farmer, thank you for being here. Hi, Hypercentric. Hi, Miss Y. I think that YI is called Y. Miss MB, you're talking about a pressure canner or a water bath canner? Hello, Dewagger Duchess. Thank you. It's an honor to have you here in my chat tonight. For those of you that tuned in early, I appreciate it. Hey, Lead Farmer, I'm so happy that you're here. You know you're my mentor. You may not want to be, but you are, buddy. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Green Organic Love, for staying on it. So, tomorrow morning, I will get up and I'm going to make some more applesauce, and I'll videotape it, and that would be part two of this uh video so i know we're going in reverse but tonight i'm going to actually can it and i chose applesauce because it only takes 20 minutes to can water bath can applesauce and while it is uh in the water bath canner then we can discuss and and answer questions okay that's how you found me, Patty Cow. Kyle through lead. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. S. Wiseman says, I have a pressure canner, but I haven't used it yet. I'm nervous. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do next Tuesday night. I believe next Monday is the holiday. Am I right? I think next Monday is the holiday. So we won't have uh, our Monday night live. We're going to have it on Tuesday. And what I'm going to do is I will pre-make whatever I decide to can in the pressure canner, but I'm going to actually do it live so you can see step by step what I do. And then the following morning, I will come on, uh, I'll upload a video on what I put in those jars. Does that make sense? Because I thought about this and I thought about this and it would be too long if I try to go from beginning to end to can apples. So tonight I chose Gala apples, one because it's my biggest and most productive tree, but I got these at Walmart. And it's real easy to do. Okay, let me wait a few more minutes because I did put the announcement for seven o'clock, so we have six minutes. Did I answer your question about the pressure canner? 
Hello, woman to woman home said, thank you for being here. Wine on the lips. You guys are a dynamic team. I love your videos, all the work that you put into it, and I like how you respond on a personal level. You let me know that you have watched my whole video by what you comment. Because some, some people say, great content. Oh, I loved it, or whatever. I don't know if you really watched it. Not that it really matters, but I, I get a personal mm, feeling in my heart when I know somebody has really watched my video. From the ground up, is there a special way to store canned soup with meat once it cools? No. You store all your canned goods the same way. The only thing that you need to do is to take this ring off. Sorry about that. Take this ring off because this hasn't been pressure canned. And then you want to, after 24 hours, turn it upside down and see if anything leaks. Okay? Don't use that as the method of sealing. You're going to seal it the way I show you tonight. But you just want to make sure that nothing leaks. And then you want to store it in a cool, dark place. In a cabinet. Okay? Yeah, I appreciate you being here, woman to woman. Thank you so much. Miss Grando, I got to ask you. Is that your profile picture? <laughs> it's so cool. Miss Grando, Grando or Grando? Is that your profile picture? Yes, okay, so next Monday is Memorial Day. So the day after, I'm going to do, walk you through by actually physically doing the pressure canner. Okay, so get your notes ready. Get your questions ready. Anybody that emails me prior to my live demonstration, I would do my best to answer your question while the procedure is processing or while the food is processing. Hi, S. Wiseman. No, man, I knew that was Whoopi. I knew. I said, this lady like Whoopi Goldberg, but I didn't want to say it just in case <laughs> you didn't want me to. That was funny. That's a funny picture. I love the expression like, Whoopi. It's so cute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I watch her all the time on The View. Okay, we got three more minutes. Three more minutes. Any questions? And then I'm going to get right into it. Okay. So I'm going to try to tune in 15 minutes early every Monday, except when it's a holiday, I'll come on the Tuesday, the day after, to get your pre-questions, and then we'll start promptly at 7. You guys know, I think I told you, I'm an old beauty school instructor, and we had a schedule, and we stuck to it, and we tried to be on time. That's why I was sweating last week, and I was so upset because I got all discombobulated and I couldn't get on. And uh, I just had a whole lot of issues. Some stuff, I, like I said, I was doing wrong. Wi-Fi was screwed up. And then I got nervous. So I, I, I'm, I'm a strickler, uh, a stickler for time. So I will not be uh, wasting your time. And I'm going to be starting promptly at 7. So if you have a question in the future, please, please, please. Come in and tune in a little bit early. You're welcome, Deb Jackson. You all have given me a purpose. Every day I get up and I think about what I'm going to do in the garden. How would that trans translate in a video? And how I can help somebody. My children are all grown. Uh, I'm sitting in this big old house by myself. So I... Uh, I really look forward to this. Let me tell you this why, why I have two more minutes to go. In January 2015, I made my first little video. I don't think it was over a couple of minutes long. And people started liking it. And it wasn't a lot of people, but enough people to make me want to do some more videos. I had no idea you can be compensated, monetized, for putting out videos. I had no idea. I didn't learn this until about two years ago. 
So I'm thankful that my uh, subscriber list has grown. My viewing hours I have picked up and I am now monetized. I think Green Organic Love was the first person that congratulated me because she noticed that the commercials were running in, the ads were running in the uh, videos. And I didn't even want to make a big thing about it, you know. So any uh, small amount of money that I will make from doing these videos, I'm going to put it back into my food forest so I can continue to bring you good content and continue to help people. I uh, I'm a lot, I'm a behind I am behind on some projects that I wanted to do in my home and in my food forest this year because I've spent all my extra coins trying to do emergency food to help people. So we all are just I can't wait for the growing watermelon video. Tired of these baseball melons. Okay, it's coming because I planted watermelon. And I, you might want to go back and look at my catalog. I might have, I can't remember, because I've been doing this five years. I think I got a couple of videos of planting watermelons and, and harvesting and having my grandchildren taste it. So uh, you might want to go and just scroll down and see. Because I didn't grow any last year, but I grew every year but last year. As I started buying more and more fruit trees and growing more fruit trees, I kind of like cut down on some of the things that I grow. Okay, it's 701. Let's get started. So last week I did my introduction to canning. And if you have a question, type it in all caps and I'll try to glance at the monitor while I am doing my review. I think I started off saying that I'm an old beauty college instructor and I have a methodical way of doing stuff. And so the first thing that I always did when I was instructing beauty college was I reviewed the previous lesson. So tonight I want to review a little bit of what I told you about water bath canning. So the easiest thing or foods to water bath can is fruit. You can water bath can any fruit, providing that you don't put any type of meat in it. Okay? So that means you can can apples, cherries, strawberries, you name it, pears, anything that you want to can by water bath canning. It is the simple method, and the reason why you can do that, hi Angela, the reason why you can water bath can is because it's acidic on the pH scale. The pH scale goes from zero all the way to 14, and right there at in the middle is seven, which is neutral. So your fruits all fall in the acid side. So anything on the acid side can be water bath. Now there are some foods that are alkaline on this side of the potential hydrogen, which is the pH in a food or product. There are a lot of things on the alkaline side that you can make acidic and water bath can them providing you add vinegar. Everybody with me? So if you add vinegar, I'm going to go get some. I have them right here. If you add vinegar to or lemon juice, because that's very acidic. Somebody said something about butters. Hold your thought. This is a red wine vinegar. And it must be 5% acidity. Here's another one. Here is a rice wine vinegar. And it has a mild uh, flavor. And it has 5% acidity. And here is a white wine vinegar. If you add that to, let's say, peppers, carrots, green beans, um artichoke, anything that you want to pickle, 
you can water back can it. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully, and I'm not trying to scare anybody or be funny. Don't you come up with your own recipes because you may not put the right amount of an acidic vinegar into a vegetable to make it safe for water bath canning. Now I know mama and them, big mama and them, and grandma, they did a whole lot of things. I am recommending that you use a reputable canning book to get your recipes. Now you can modify them. I'm gonna give you an example. And I showed this book to you all last week. Remember, some of you email me or put in a message or a comment. Thank you, Betty Jones. I appreciate that. Uh, and told me that you bought this book. Good. So now here on, I think it's page 139, this is the applesauce recipe that I used. It's simply six pounds of peeled apples, cored and quartered, two thirds cup of sugar, one half cup of water, and two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice. So you didn't really need a lot of lemon juice in it for the simple reason apples on that pH scale is acid. So even if you don't put the lemon juice in it, it still will be fine. Now me, because I'm predisposed to diabetes, I'm not diabetic yet, and I hope I don't be diabetic, but it runs in my family. And so for 12 years, I've been pre-diabetic, but I keep my levels right there where I don't have to take any medication. So because of that, I use this monk fruit sweetener. And when my sister first told me about it, I said, I ain't paying no $26 for this because you use it the same ratio as you use sugar. But then I started thinking about it. If I have a taste for something sweet, can you guys see this? Thank you, Lad Farmer. Thank you so much. If I have a taste for something sweet, at my age, I'm not going to deprive myself. I, you, know, you can look at me, child, I don't deprive myself. But I eat very healthy. I go off a little bit, but I get right back on eating healthy. So this monk fruit will not raise your sugar level. You can eat it as much as you want and you will not get diabetes because it has zero net carbs, zero glycemic, zero calories, and you use it one-to-one -one just like sugar. So instead of me putting the two-third cup or whatever that was of sugar in there, I put the monk fruit. So you can substitute things like that, but when you start doing complicated recipes where you got to have, let's say, three cups of 5% acidity vinegar to change the pH from alkaline in a cucumber to acid so that you can water bath can it, you've got to follow the recipes to a T. The only thing you can change is, I like more garlic, so you put a little more garlic. I like red pepper flakes, so you put a little bit more rep pepper flakes. You don't like peppercorn, so you leave that out. But when it comes to the chemical composition of the product, don't change those amounts in the recipes. Only thing you want to change is the amount of sugar and the amount of seasoning. Are there any questions? So we can substitute the sweetener. Yes, ma'am. That's exactly my point, Angela. Exactly. But when you're trying to take something, a vegetable that is alkaline and make it acid, don't substitute the vinegar. You can substitute the flavors. If you, you know, you like the flavor of white wine vinegar because it tastes good on chicken. Or if you like the flavor of this mellow uh, rice wine, you can substitute that. Or if you like red wine flavor that you use a beef 
and stuff like that, yes, you can change the flavor of the vinegar. Hold on one second. But for the most part, you're going to use either white wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar. Everybody with me? All right. Now, let's get back to the applesauce. So I'm going to do a mock explanation. But tomorrow morning, probably before noon, I will upload it and you're gonna see me step by step peeling the apples, coring them, cutting them up, putting them in the Dutch oven, putting the little water that it says in the recipe, and putting the sweetener, which is gonna be the monk fruit. And you're gonna see me mashing it up, bring it after it's brought to a boil. Hey, Elaine Talley is my sister-in-law. Hey, girly. It's a private joke. <laughs> so, and by the way, speaking of Elaine, Elaine married, is married to my brother. They've been married like 43, 45 years. Is that right, Elaine? They got married on the same year my husband, my late husband and I got married. So, uh, She's a wonderful person. She used to, she grew up on a farm is what I was going to say. And she made apple butter. I'll never forget it. So Elaine just retired. And, I, and the first thing I said to her was, so now you're going to start making some of that apple butter you used to make and jelly and jams. And um, it seems like when we get a certain age, when we're in our 20s and our 30s and 40s, we're raising a family. Thank you, Quietly Gardening. And thank you, Ms. Wisdom. It seems like we're in that age, we get like in a rut. Two people working in the home, uh, you're working overtime, you're checking kids' homework, you got to do laundry, you're trying to make them have nutritious meals, you're trying to live a good life to set a good moral example for them. We don't garden when we're around that age. We don't garden like we back in the day. We're going through the drive th through and, hey, what, what are we going to eat? I don't know what you're going to eat. Okay, let's go pick up some chicken. That type of thing. But then as you start getting in your late 40s and 50s, then you start thinking. Bet mama died from complications of heart disease and diabetes. And Big Daddy had kidney failure and he was on dialysis for 15 years. And his sister was on dialysis. See, I have kidney disease, but I've been holding it for 12 years, getting ready to go into my 13th year. So when you start getting a certain age, you start thinking, wait a minute, I got to do better. I got to stop eating this stuff because we have been conditioned to go through the drive through The meals get bigger and bigger. You water sizes, super sizes, bigger sizes or whatever. And the next thing you know, all the kids run around fat. So my brother had put on um, last Thursday, he put all these pictures of my, my children when they were growing up, and nobody was obese. But the kids today, they're eating a lot of junk, a lot of fluff, and they sitting here doing this all day with the video games. So we got to get back to the basics, guys. We got to get back to spending time with the family. Thank you, Naked Gardener. That's why he drinks, I mean, eats baseball. Plant meals, plant-based meals, uh, Monday through Friday, and splurge on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing. I even went eight months being a vegan. <laughs> it was the worst eight months of my life. I lost 42 pounds, but as soon as I had a chicken wing, it was over. Because I missed that meat. <laughs> so I'm trying to do like what you're saying, Naked Gardener, trying to, you know, maintain, kind of balance it out. So that way you won't deprive yourself and you will crave it when, because um, you denied yourself for so long. So put me back on track, guys. Where, where was I? The procedure, oh, the, about the kids and eating all the wrong things. So you, when I had cancer, I got cancer in 1992. I told you about the ailments that my mom had, my dad had, but... Nobody had cancer, so I want to know how I get breast cancer. 
Because with, with no family history of that, I thought, well, you know, I'll be taken out by diabetes. My mother had heart disease. I'll be taken out by kidney failure like my father. But breast cancer? Nobody had that. But I started doing a lot of research. And I come to the conclusion, that's why they're obese, that's because they're sitting down. Yes, ma'am. I come to the conclusion that my diet was not right and the profession that I was in, I was predisposed to a lot of chemicals. Then I started looking at all the ingredients on the back of a pasta sauce or tomato paste and all these words that I can't pronounce. And that's when I started eating a little bit better. And I tell everybody, I'm a nice-sized lady. I love to eat, but I eat healthy. Okay. Somebody said they only eat meat one time a day. White flour homestead. Okay. So, those chicken wings are a deal breaker. I'm telling you, I went eight months. I even did Christmas and Thanksgiving with none of the turkey and ham, all that. People look at me like I was crazy. But once I had that chicken wing, it was over. Them hot wings, it was over. So now I eat them and I have, um, you can't see it from here, but I have an air fryer. So I eat the chicken wings, uh, naked chicken wings. There's ways to do it and to season them and make you feel that you still got that chicken wing. Cancer is the reason why I started all this healthier and cleaner eating. That's that I want to do. It's the chemicals that is killing us. I agree. Because, like I said, I expected to get diabetes or kidney failure or kidney disease, but I never expected the breast cancer. Nobody had it but me. And I was blessed and fortunate that I called it myself early that I didn't have to have a mastectomy. And I hope I'm not making anybody feel uncomfortable. But I was one of those people that did the experimental one of the first people in the Dallas area that did the experimental treatment where they just took out the lump and then they took 16 lymph nodes out of under my arm to make sure it hadn't spread. And then I did an experimental chemotherapy and experimental radiation treatment. So I was very, very blessed uh, that I survived because it was, in a, very, it was a, a very aggressive type of cancer that was supposed to metastasize. Okay, one chicken wing and it was over. <laughs> Miss Wisdom, that was, that's, that's, that's the truth. I had one chicken wing and I said, what the hell? I, I've been starving myself. No, I'm not gonna, I've gotta find a healthier way. So once again, my sister to the rescue, the one that told me about the up fruit, I only have one sister, I have sister-in-laws like sisters. But she said, we need to start using an air fryer. I said, yeah, I've been hearing about that, in fact, I got one in my shopping cart, in an Amazon shopping cart. And so we got the both, both got the same one. And from that day forward, we um, spray a little olive oil on our meat. And, and we put water in there with that olive oil and do the air fryer. And hey, Diva Jones, nice to see you. And, um, so you st and you make your sauce and you still think you've got the hot wings with all the grease without it. Okay, so now. So everybody understand that on that potential hydrogen, that pH scale, your vegetables and your meat are over here and your fruit is over here. So let me get back to the applesauce. So I cook the applesauce down. I use a small amount of water. I use a small amount of sugar substitute. Then I mashed it down and then I put it in my uh, blender. And I pureed it because I like mine kind of uh, smooth. Some people like their applesauce chunky. So whatever way you like it, that's what you do. So now we're going to move on. And I'm going to reintroduce you to these pieces of equipment that I did last week. You want to lift your jar after you water bath it with your jar lifter. And don't be afraid. They are designed ergonomically to grip it and it won't drop okay and remember the wood goes on your hands and the plastic at the bottom when you're filling up your jar if you haven't gotten you one already everybody can see that you want to put this funnel in 
And then here is your little dipper, and you're gonna dip your applesauce or whatever you're doing, and you're gonna fill your jar up. Everybody with me? And then you're gonna make sure that it does not go past this second ring. Can you see that it's two rings here, circles? You wanna make sure that it doesn't go past here. Hi, Angela. Hi, Stephanie, thank you for coming. Okay, and then after you do that, here is your debubbler, and you wanna make sure that there are no bubbles. Now, I'm gonna tell you a secret. You're not gonna have bubbles with your applesauce if you puree them real smooth, so you can omit this step. Are there any questions? Now, let's back up. While your applesauce is cooking, it is at this time that you wanna sanitize your jars because you're not pressure canning, you're water bath canning, okay? So you have to make sure that your, your jars are sanitized. So you wanna wash them with a little dish soap and water, and then you can do two things. Well, actually, you can do three. You can rinse them off real well, put them in a pan, put them in your oven on 250 for 20 minutes, some people put them in their dishwasher if they have the dishwasher type like I have that has the heat cycle and it gets real hot and that would dry and sanitize them. Or you can dip them in hot water that you boil and remove them with this. Are there any questions? Did everybody get that? Because I'm moving on. Okay, great. So now let's pretend we did all of that and we filled up our jars. The next thing we're going to do, and I'm getting ready to turn you all around. So we're in the kitchen. Can everybody see me? So the next thing we're going to do, and I'm going to have to stop for a minute and wash my hands. The next thing we're going to do is I use vinegar. Anytime I'm working with vin uh, sugar or if I'm working with any type of oil, I use vinegar. Let me show you guys. I already did this part. Okay? So what I did was I left one without the cap. Let me plug this in. See if you can see. And I'm going to get better and I have one lid down there because I need to sanitize it. So I'm going to bring it to a board. Did everybody see that? Yeah. So I'm going to heat that up. And while that's heating up, I'm going to take some vinegar with this paper towel. And I'm going to wipe just around the ring. Because that's the only thing that you're going to come in contact with your lid. And I guess I should have turned that on. So I'm going to sit down and we're going to talk. And you've already washed this, but you don't have to sterilize this because it will not come in contact with the food. So we're going to put this over here. I already got one there. Now, I'm going to let that come to a boil. Now, don't boil your rings too long. Just five minutes, guys, will kill any pathogenic bacteria. If you boil them too long, this rubber will loosen up and it won't seal adequately. And while we're on the subject, I said this last week, but I think it bears repeating. I don't reuse lids. That's why I put the date and what it is on top of the lid. And sometimes I don't even put what it is because you can see right through the jar. You know what it is. But I do know people do leave, uh, use the lids over and over again. I don't want to take that chance. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about these lids is 
Bowls and they bought out Care, K-E-R-R. -R. They make these lids. And now they say they only last for 18 months, the seal. But I want you to know that they will last longer, but they recommend 18 months so that you won't sue them um, if something comes unsealed and you've eaten it and you get sick or your family gets sick. But what's so wonderful for about canning in a clear jar is this. You can look at it. You can see that it's no mold. Let me go get one. You can see there's no mold. You can, when you open the jar, you can tell it doesn't smell bad. Um, nothing's growing on it. You can tell that there's nothing wrong with this food. These are roasted peppers. And you guys remember last week I had a whole table full of goods that I have canned. Are there any questions on this? Good. Now I'm going to turn the camera back around. Go back to the kitchen. Because you can see it's boiling. So all I'm going to do. And I'm going to have to wash my hands again because I touched the camera. And then you pick up your lid. As long as your hands are clean, you do not have to dry this lid. For what? You got moisture in here. And then you're going to center the lid. Can everybody see that? Then you're going to put your ring on. And now when you put your ring on, you're only going to do it finger tight. You're not going to go, oh, oh. You don't do that. You do that after you've processed it. Everybody got me? Just finger tight. That's it. Applesauce homemade is so good. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I ate some. <laughs> so now, I'm getting everything ready for the canner. This is cold pack. If, if I had hot packed it, I would have turned my water on. Because remember last week when I told you, you don't take cold food in a jar and put it in hot water. The, the glass will crack. And you don't take hot food and put it in cold water. So this is room temperature. And because I knew I was going to be doing this demonstration, I have my water. Now, because of my kidney disease, I got to drink one of these a day. So when I finish it, I just use tap water. I don't like the water where I live. So I just take this, fill it up, and put it under my sink so that when it's time to can, I already have it. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my gas, and I'm going to start putting the water in. Room temperature tap water with room temperature food. And it should take about two gallons, but I'm going to start putting the jars in. These are pint jars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jars is enough. So if I had another batch that I was going to do, I would just add more to this and can the next batch. But I'm not canning anymore. I'm going to eat this bad boy tomorrow so for breakfast or for lunch. So I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And that's what you do too. If you ever have one that doesn't seal properly, just put it in the refrigerator. Okay. So now I'm going to lower this rack. You see this right here? I'm going to lower it. 
and I have to make sure that my water completely covers the jars. And usually for pints, two gallons will do it a mm, little bit less than a gallon. Almost two gallons. Everybody with me? Now, some people put the top on the canner and start timing. Balls recommend that you bring it to a boil then you put the top on, then you start your canner, okay? Are there any questions while we're make, letting that come to a boil? It won't be long. Is Chef Raw Digger here? Or Chef Dagger? I see somebody talking to him. Well, thank you if you are. Oh yes, I, Marilyn. Thank you. He said, what the hell is going on? People can chat and go like Lime Street. Guys, hit the like button if you will. Uh, Talita, 360 Cafe, would you consent to be one of my moderators? I'm asking you before I do it. <laughs> okay, so since you're not saying anything, that means yes. Can you can your own canned goods in your pantry? Yes, ma'am. Some people do. I'm in some canning groups on Facebook and they get like, um, real large cans of kidney beans that's dented or tomato sauce. You know, I, I don't know the number, but they know the number, number 10 or whatever size that you get like at Sam's Club and Costco. No pectin is needed in applesauce. It has its own nat natural pectin, so it thickens up naturally, but you're not making jam or jelly. Uh, and yes, and they can it, but the problem I have with that is why? Because they are canning food that probably have chemicals in it or went through a chemical process to can it. For example, hello, be wise. For example, some people use uh it's a form of chlorine when they flash cook tomatoes. And it's chemical. So I don't want to can stuff that's already been canned or processed with chemicals. Especially if I'm an organic gardener and I'm trying to get these chemicals and pesticides and all this stuff out of my body. Because I told you I gave me cancer in 1992. I don't want to can canned goods. I want to can fresh. I want to can organic. Now, if you get a deal on 100 pounds of potatoes and they weren't organically grown, would I can them? I don't eat potatoes, but I eat sweet potatoes. Yes, I would. I would peel those potatoes and process them. But if I had a choice between organic and non-organic or organic and something that grew in my backyard as opposed to something that was already in the can, I wouldn't do it. I hope I answered your question. Okay, another question while we're waiting for the can to boil. Because after that comes to a boil, it will be, it'll end so quick. Because it only has to process for 20 minutes for applesauce. And don't play around with these recipes. If it says 20 minutes, this stuff has been scientifically proven and tested that it killed any pathogenic bacteria in that jar 20 minutes. No lemon juice in applesauce. It's not necessary. Do 
Do you use lemon in your apples? Someone asked earlier. You can. It just depends. I think I answered that right. Yeah. My mother-in-law can. So I need to watch her and learn. Yes, ma'am. I learned a lot from my grandparents. Okay. Did I answer it? Okay, very good. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit more about the canning. After it comes out of the canner, you want to make sure that you don't try to force it to seal. Don't, because you, if you look at this real close, let me see if you can see it. Somebody told me, hold it at an angle. There it goes. You see that little bubble? Can y'all see that? What about power cookers? It has a canning setting. No, ma'am. I, I, I'm in a lot of canning groups on Facebook, and they say those things do not safely can. I water bath canned tomato sauce. Eggplant, is it safe to eat? Did you put any um, vinegar in it? Hi, Essie. Did you put any vinegar in it? Whoever that was. If you put vinegar or lemon juice, it'll be safe. If you didn't, then I wouldn't eat it. Who was that? Okay, well, let's get back to this. Can you see that little bubble? Because I can see it. When you take it out of can, don't try to force it and press, press that in. You'll know when it seals because it's going to pop and it'll be smooth. And I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Okay? No. you can, Remember we said about the seasoning? Somebody said uh, if they add uh, cinnamon to it, will that change anything as far as the acidity? No. You remember I said that you can, oh, I did. I did do lemon juice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me back up. Somebody asked me about the lemon juice. That recipe did call for two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice. Yes, it did. And I, I remember using it too. But remember we said about don't change the vinegar, don't change the lemon juice. Don't change the amount of sugar or pectin if you're making jelly, but you can tweak your recipe with seasoning, herbs, and spices. So that won't change anything. Thank you, whoever brought that up about the lemon juice. You were right. Right, that recipe, six pounds of apples, sugar, a half a cup of water, I think it's two-thirds cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice. You can hear it pop, yes. I have some videos out on YouTube that I show mama, daughter, sister, thank you. I, I, I let you hear it pop. I just sat there right there, put my chair right there with my video camera, and I said, did you hear that? And then another one pops, and then another one pops. It's like music to your ears. I love it. And you know my favorite part of candy when I pressure can? I like to take the jars out and sit there and watch them continue to boil. Especially something about chicken boiling. I just love to see it. Chicken soup. Okay. Yes, it is. It's just a, a beautiful feeling, right, Essie? Does the lemon juice keep the applesauce fresh? It would stay fresh without it, but lemon juice will keep it from turning brown. I think that would be the correct answer. I got any chemists in the house? You guys know when you put lemon juice on certain fruits, like you're doing a fruit salad, and mom and them say, put some lemon juice on that, girl. That, that keeps the fruit salad from turning and looking all ooky. I make a tomato sauce, but I freeze it. Can I water bath it after you've frozen it? Is that your question? Because all of these mason jars are freezable. 
And when you freeze something, you want to make sure that you go down below that ring there because what happens when you freeze it, ice expands. So if you fill it all the way up to here, then it's going to bust and, and pop the lid. And when you freeze them, let me show you. When you freeze them, you don't freeze them with a metal lid like this in a ring. You freeze them with a plastic lid. I've got some stuff in the freezer that I didn't have enough to can. So I just put a couple jars of soup or greens in the, freeze, in the freezer. And let me share, share this with you. When you take your goods out the freezer, don't put them in hot water. Don't put them on the counter. Put them in your refrigerator and let them slowly unthaw. I broke, <laughs> broke many jars trying to force it. Yes, acid keeps it from oxidizing. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was the word I couldn't think of. Hello, Supreme Family Garden. I didn't see when you came in, but I see somebody is speaking to you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Jar balls, jars, and some of them, let me go get one real quick. Some of them have it on the jar. I don't know if you can see this. Mm, you can't see it, it's, but it's written up here, freezing. You can't see it. Um, just take my word for it. <laughs> I'm going to turn this around now. I'm going back into the kitchen. You can see my water is boiling. Can you see the hot water? Can you see the bubbles? Yeah, I can see the steam. So now I have 20 minutes. This is when you start your timer. Now you see how you could have under processed them if you put the top on and started timing them? So now it's 741, 8 o'clock, 801, they will be finished. And I hope I made you feel comfortable that you can do this. The easiest thing to can is fruit. But I will say this. When you start making a whole lot of jellies and jams, look at those recipes. And if you're predisposed to diabetes, be careful because some of those recipes calls for eight cups of sugar for the same amount of applesauce that I just made. So be careful about making a whole lot of jellies and jams because, I, as, a, as I said earlier, when you're young, it's not a problem. You work out and you eat all that stuff, but when you get older, your metabolism slows down. <laughs> and you, what you eat will turn into store fat cells faster than it did when you were younger. Even if you're still active, you have to work out harder. So I, I'm, I'm asking everybody, just slow down on the sugar. Who said they were nervous? Who are you nervous? Why are you nervous? You nervous wine on the lips about canning? You're welcome, Angela. Mm-hmm. Now I have a confession. Now I've only told two people in this group this. I don't like to come before the camera because I know I've gained weight since, you know, retiring. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I'm kind of funny like that. <laughs> but I had to get out of that mindset because people are not looking at all of this. They're listening to what's coming out of my mouth. And they want to be helped. And they want to preserve their harvest. And they want to give their children and big mama and, and big daddy some healthy food. And let me tell you something, guys. Do you know that I, when I give people my canned goods for Christmas, hi, NeNe, 60, they like that more than, than, than me giving them a fancy gift because they know I put a lot of love in it. They know that I grew those greens. 
and they knew that all the love that I put into it to grow them organically, spraying it with that neem oil, and then washing those greens and picking it and, and cooking them and smothering them down with some turkey wings instead of a ham hock that's real fattening and bad for your heart and raise your cholesterol. They know I took the time out to grow it and then to cook it healthy. And then when I give them a jar, you should see the smile. Because all they have to do is open it, heat it, and serve it. Guys, you don't have to buy that sandwich and that uh, chili in the can with the beans or without the beans. You make your own. And it's so cheap. When you think about it, that you grew all those greens from a couple of packages of seeds, Miss Cheryl, we are not judging you. I didn't get it all. I wish I could see it. Yeah. Oh, I'm put one that's grateful for your knowledge. Thank you. I, I had to get that in my head. A couple people told me that. They said, no, Miss C, they like to see you in front of the camera. We'd like to see you when you're out there physically working in the garden. And I think I told you all last week, I was the eyelash and the lipstick and the hair extensions and the nails instructor. <laughs> so, so I didn't want to be in front of the video with a sweatshirt with holes in it and, and, and jogging pants and stuff. But I got, I, I'm getting out of that. You can put a dinner in a mason jar. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Let me go get you a couple. Greens, 119, mixed greens all out of my garden, soup, broccoli, spinach, corn, carrots, kale, of course the chicken for the stock. Then I have another one that I put tomato sauce in, yes ma'am. When I don't feel good, I never have to worry about anything because I know I can go to my grow room. Half of it's the grow room, half is the pantry. I got a video on that too. And just grab something off of my shelf and eat. I told you last week and I'm going to repeat it again today. I have enough food to last me a whole year. Hi, Turf Therapy. Nice to see you. I basically go online order my water. I buy a couple boxes every three or four weeks of unsalted crackers because of the kidney disease and the salt and stuff. And I buy gallons of water and my little flavored seltzer water. I don't know if you can see that. Orange I mean, I, I, buy, I buy some fruit when it's not in season. Stuff like that. But I don't, I don't spend a lot of money on food. Rice. Flour, cornmeal. When you can collard greens other than smoked turkey wings, do you use any of? Oh yeah, I got a whole recipe on the on the. On, check my canning. Um, thank you, Shana. Nice to see you. Yes, I use smoked turkey wings, smoked, and you could even use the legs, but because it doesn't have that much grease in it, that that fat in it. And you can spoon that off. Question. Show us your pantry, Cheryl. Check out my video. You ain't going in that pantry today. <laughs> you can look at my video, my last live video, and I show, share a chow chow, jelly, all this kind of stuff that I make. You're not going in that pantry today because I have not cleaned up that room since I took my transplants out, of, out there to the garden. I'll do that later. Do you have a favorite seed catalog? I like Baker Creek, and I know a lot of you are not going to like this, but I like to order seeds from the small merchants on eBay because I have been in business for myself as a salon owner. I mean, I, I've been in business for myself for a very long time, so I like to uh, play back the live when you get time, Miss Cheryl. Shares it all. Thank you. So I like to order. I ordered some seeds off eBay. Uh, I believe it was yesterday. Because I was reading, I can't think of the herb it is right now. Uh, I was reading, uh, what could I companion? Oh, I don't know what I ordered. I ordered some Bush, Kentucky Wonder Beans, something like that. 
because I was reading how, what can I companion plant with my sweet potatoes. You remember I made a video the other day on that? I got my slips in because I wasn't planning on buying any, I mean, growing any sweet potatoes, but I did it for my emergency garden to give food away because I have plenty of sweet potatoes that I pressure can. Some of it plain and some of it with the no calorie natural sweetener in it so I can make my own little candy yams. So at the last minute, I decided to grow some for the emergency garden, and I didn't have enough time to uh, grow the slips, so I ordered them off of eBay. And then when I got them in, I thought about it. These two big 30-gallon totes, it's going to take about four to five months for those sweet potatoes to make. I could be growing something on the top of it. I'm always thinking, you know, how to utilize my real estate, my gardening real estate. And so I was researching online and it, and it told me to use a, I think it's called Summer Savory. It's a, it's a herb that people don't grow that much of. And I found it on eBay. And the other thing I ordered was those beans, those bush beans. And they would be supported by the vines. And so I can get another, um, another crop out of that real estate for those, those big totes. So as soon as they come in, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to show you how I'm going to plant those in with my sweet potato vines. What I love about your recipe is that they are packed with flavors. So it's easy for me to make. Yes, other than veggies. And by the way, while we're talking about this, when I steam my vegetables, I don't put anything in it until I pour the water off. And then I let that water cool. Let's just say I poured it in here because this glass can take hot. Then I'll put it to the side and I'll let it cool off. Then I'll go pour that out on one of my containers. It's compost tea. Does that make sense? All the nutrition is in the liquid. So if you are pouring your liquid that you steam your vegetables in down the drain, you need to put it back into your garden. You bleach it. Bleach what? Or do you mean blanch it? Why do you put your seeds in the freezer? Wine on the lips. Something I learned from my grandmother. She kept all of her seeds in double bag, bagged it by seasons. And they last longer. If you look at one of my videos I did last week, I used some old butternut squash seeds that I bought in 2018, and I was running out of freezer space, so I went into my seed inventory, and all the seeds that I got, like, for two cents a package at Dollar General, Family Dollar, at the end of the gardening season, they put all that stuff on sale. Four cents for flower seeds in my area, North Dallas, and two cents for vegetable seeds. I didn't freeze them, I froze all my good seeds from Baker Creek and some of the merchants that I use on eBay. So have you heard about people that said they found um, in an iceberg in a very cold area uh, something that was frozen and they thawed it out and they found out it was a rare a pumpkin that was 25 years, 2500 years old? And then they started producing them again. Freezers, freezing your seeds will um, preserve them. Another thing you can do for some seeds, for example, I bought sugar apple seeds from eBay. And the grower, the merchant, told me to stratify them. So you put them in the refrigerator or the freezer for several months and you are mimicking nature as if they were outside and the seed pods were drying on the tree and it went through those seasons. So I put them in the refrigerator and they germinated right away. Buy a small package of your local grocers and try them with tea or just to see if you like it first. Uh, I have a, a lady friend, her name is Mercedes Herman. She is a retired uh, nurse. She used to be in my gardening group. 
I had a gardening group on Facebook. And by the way, if some of you have been trying to join that group, I, I closed it down. But I wanted to reserve it for another project that I'm going to start uh, soon. But she told me I couldn't get my... Now, we pronounce this st stuff differently. I call them nurstatiums, nasturtiums. You all know what I'm talking about. I couldn't get them to germinate. And she told me to pour some lukewarm tea on them and let them sit for about six hours. And I did that, and they germinated in a couple of days. And I couldn't get them to germinate. So a lot of stuff we learn from people that learn from their parents or their grandparents, a lot of that stuff really helps. And it really works. Somebody said something about flowers. Welcome to the Okay. Very good. So it is 7.55. We have six more minutes. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to take that out the canner. Watermelon jelly. Oh, my goodness, Miss Cheryl. <laughs> Oh, I was watching somebody today. Essie, she made watermelon jelly today. Essie, if, are you still here? You you said something about you what you were going to do with those rinds. People pickle those watermelon rinds. You got to scrub them real good. I made them once. My grandkids didn't like them that much, but you might want to try it. Um, kids eat almost anything. Kids can eat almost anything that has sugar in it, you know. But I have made um, peanut butter. I've grown peanuts. Let the kids roast it. Help me, you know, roast the peanuts in the oven. Then we shell them and then we ground it up with a little peanut oil. And you don't even have to can that. How long can you keep seeds? What was the question? In the refrigerator? Indefinitely. How long can you keep seeds? Oh, if they're not refrigerated. You can keep them, but you can do a test. You can put them in the water. Uh, what's her name? Bear Fruit Gardener has a little video out where she puts them in water and you'll know if they float to the top, they're not viable. Uh, you can use the uh, napkin and spray water on the napkin, put your seeds there, fold it up, put it into a plastic bag, zip it up, check it in a few days, and if they start sprouting, they're vi uh, viable. There are a lot of things that you can do. Okay. Don't start making me put on my boxing gloves. Is Nick messing with you, Diva? <laughs> as long as it does not drop the temperature. Very good. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. I like watermelon tea. I'm not really a jelly eater. I like teas. Hi, Lady Cheryl. Just got my country plan. Hoping for good results. Love your videos. Thank you so much. I'm telling you, man, you cannot go wrong with that country. My garden started exploding with growth. I hope my sister-in-law is still in here. She can tell you. When I started composting, and when I started making compost tea, then I learned about comfrey, comfrey tea. I got some comfrey tea brewing right now, three gallons. And I'm telling you, you need some comfort. Go to eBay. Go to eBay. They sell it very inexpensive. And the comfort that you want to get, don't buy any seeds. You want to get Russian Comfrey Blocking 14. That one has the most NPK, all the nutrients that you need for your plants to survive. Russian Blocking Russian country blocking 14. I couldn't name all the channels. Okay, while we're waiting for the last few minutes if, of the care, if you have a channel, can you please type yes and what's your garden zone? And if you don't have a channel, can you please just put your garden zone? So, we have newbies in the house that want to look at other channels. If, if it says yes, they have a channel in the garden zone. If we have newbies in the house and you just put your zone in, you might want to connect with people in the same garden zone because you have the same type of climate. Now, there are going to be some elements, some factors that are going to be a little bit different. You, I get a lot of rain. People don't believe it, but in Texas, uh, Naked Gardener lives in Garland. He knows. I'm telling you, 
I had standing water in my backyard and my front yard the other day. So I planted two fruit trees I got in from Stark Brothers yesterday. I put them in a container. I put them in a container until they have been in my environment for two or three years. Then I put them in the ground because I have killed some trees. I killed them by drowning them, planting them in the wintertime, which is good because we don't get real, real cold winters. But then it starts to rain January, February, March, April, May. And then from June on until October, we don't hardly get any rain. Okay? And so I drowned the roots and they rotted. So it took me a while to learn. Don't put my trees in the ground right away because we get too much rain. Man, I'm telling you, we had so much rain the other day, it was pathetic. But I can't complain about that because my good days outweigh my bad days. And I am thankful to God that I can grow all year round. Some of you all tell me, boy, you really keep me going. Hello, Miss Cheryl. Hey, backyard gardener. Yes, I can grow all year round. And there's some people in this gardening community that live in Chicago that's growing all year round by doing winter sowing. I showed you that book by uh, Goldman last, Coleman last week, Elliot Coleman. You can grow all year round into, can you use watermelon? Yes, for compost. Take the seeds out because you're going to start having volunteers and mystery plants growing. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Whoever asked that question. Oh, yes. I cut up the uh, watermelon. And if I'm in a real big hurry and I need some compost, I put it in my blender. We'll talk about that one week. I've got banana peels, coffee grounds, and uh, banana peels, coffee grounds, and eggshells. And I make a slurry. And then I put it all on my plants, especially my roses. Okay, it's 8.01. I'm going to turn it back around. And we're going to the kitchen. Now, because I'm working with hot water, I don't have to wash my hands all again. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the fire off. We're going to take the top off. And notice how I took it off away from me. Because if I was standing real close, took that top off, that steam would have dropped right down on my foot. Okay, I'm going to put this over here. Then we're not going to do anything. We're going to wait five minutes. Now, we're always trying to rush things. I'm telling you, don't rush it. Just let it relax. And another thing I can do if I want to, I'm going to turn it back around. I can do this. Well, I'm trying to lean over. You see how I put, put, pushed it up? Let the steam escape. It is now 8.02, 8.07. I'll show you how you take them out and what you do after that. Strawberry shout out. Oh, that's a, a video. Okay. Oh, somebody said they enjoyed my singing. Are you trying to ask me to sing a song while we wait the next five minutes? Huh? You all want me to do a gospel song or... <laughs> I'm just kidding. You all didn't come here for that. But if I get three more people, I'm going to take requests. <laughs> uh, my roots, I don't know if you can tell, my roots are in the church. Gospel. So I'm going to do a, just one verse of a gospel song for you all. I'm going to tell you why I do it. I told you about the cancer I had, and what I didn't tell you is I had thyroid issue here. I had a tumor removed, if you can see that scar. Don't look at my other chins. Uh, <laughs> I had a tumor wrapped around my thyroid, grew from my thyroid, wrapped around my esophagus, and when they removed it, <coughs> it damaged my vocal cords. So I talked like this for, excuse me, for, they're popping. I just heard a pop. 
the, uh, when I say pop, that means that that's sealed. You remember that indentation? That bubble? You can hear him pop. Oh, so, yeah, so it took me two years and I couldn't sing. I talked in a baritone voice until my, to all that healed up. And uh, I'm thankful, you know, that I, I, I was able to sing again. I'll never go back to singing the way I was before. But as long as I have breath, I'm going to sing a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm going to do this song for you all. Um, it's my mother's favorite song. It's, uh, you can't hurry, God. You just have to wait. You have to trust him and give him time. No matter how long it takes. For he's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there now. Don't worry. He may not come. I said he may not come. He may not come when you want him, but... I know, <laughs> I'm telling you something, I know, I know that I know that I know that I know the Lord is always on time. That's it, that's it. I can hear the applause in my head. <laughs> I'm not conceited, I just love to sing. I just love to sing. I grew up singing, leading the choir and all that stuff and all through school and, and I sang in a professional gospel group. And, uh, yes, he's always on time. Somebody said, make me feel like I'm in church. But, you know, I have to be careful because you can, you can, you can offend people. Because everybody doesn't have our same beliefs. So that's why I have to watch what I say sometimes. Because, um, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. Hey, there go my sister-in-law. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. But she knows how I used to sound. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you for the gift. I appreciate that, Miss Maleo. Thank you so much. Okay, how many minutes we got left? Who's keeping the time for me? It was 8.01. It's 8.06. So... By my cal calculations, I think it's time. Oh no, I'm ne I'll never be ashamed. I'll never be ashamed, but I'm saying on certain platforms, you know, I gotta be careful. I've seen people go crazy on YouTube. They start off doing one thing and then they the channel change and you build up your subscribers based upon how you represented yourself. And then you freak out and change in the middle of the game. You have to be careful. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to say too much. Hey, skinny boy. Skinny boy Randy. Okay, I'm going to turn everything around. Again, I don't have to wash my hands because I'm not touching any food. I'm going to use... This wood part of the bottle or jar gripper. And you just want to come in and remove any liquid. And that's why you wait five minutes so you don't have nothing really hard to do. And you want to make sure that they're not touching. There's space in between them. I'm just pouring the water off the top. And I can look and see a lot of them are not sealed. A couple of them are. And you're going to start hearing them pop. Now, if you're a man, like Nick, strong sapling of a gentleman, 
You could take that over to the sink and pull that water out. I don't. Let me get one. I tell you what I do. I go get one of these. I go get one of my pots, and I dip the water out and put it into the sink because I have strained my back picking up stuff that's too heavy. Does that make sense? Okay. Now. We have all of the jars out. We're going to put a towel or two over them. Keep that heat. That will facilitate them into sealing. Because a lot of them are not sealed. Because you can see that little bubble at the top. And you want to leave them undisturbed for 24 hours. Now, this is the part that I see a lot of people doing. Let me go get me a ring. They take this. And they leave it stored like this. If you do that with this ring and you do your test after 24 hours and you turn it upside down and nothing leaks out, you really don't know if you sealed it or not. Because, thank you, Randy, because this ring is keeping it in place. But when you take this off and then you turn it upside down after 24 hours and nothing leaks out, then you know you have a good seal. First thing you'll know that this is smooth in here, doesn't have an indentation, and then nothing leaks. Now, I don't want to tell you don't do what mom and them did, but it's a lot of people still leave the rings on. And when you do that, sometimes it's hard to get them off. So I like to know my food is sealed, and that's why I take them off. And that's what the um, food, what is that organization? I can't think of it right now. It's a governmental a preservation um, website that you go to. Thank you. That means a lot. She says she loves my channel. They will tell you to take those rings off. And if you are cooking food that may have escaped like, um, oh, this. Like the greens that got a little fat in it from the turkey. If you cook this, sometimes a little bit will ooze out and it'll be in your pressure canner because you're going to pressure can meat and greens. So you want to take this and wash your uh, jars off, especially around here around the seal. Wash that off real good because you can have dry food that would escape and, and seal this like super glue, and then it'll come up. Please remember to hit, okay, thank you. I always wonder how much water to add. Mine's always overflowed. Learn something. Yeah, keep that, that level down to about here, and if you're working with meat, keep it here. I'm, a, I'm gonna uh, pressure can next week on Tuesday. For those of you that came in a little bit later, I'm gonna already have it already ready and then we'll go through the pressure canning procedure. Thank you to everyone who hit the like button. Thank you so much. Thank you, Martha Howard, National Center for Food Preservation. Thank you. That is exactly it. Somebody asked me today a question about squash and zucchini, about canning it. According to the National Food Preservation website, they say no. Thank you, Emilio. They say no. What's your favorite pressure can? All American. All American 721 is the Cadillac. They say no. They say because pathogenic bacteria can penetrate and get inside of those of the skin. And they say you can't adequately pressure can it. If you do, it'll turn to mush. So I don't pressure can squash. 
if mom and them did and you still doing it, I'm not saying you wrong. I'm just telling you what I don't do. Now, I will, and I was sharing this with, I don't know if she's in here tonight, Starduster 2, a recipe I shared with her about um, taking uh, overgrown zucchini. You know, you could take that and make your banana bre uh, zucchini bread. And I was sharing with her that um, I make zucchini uh, mock pineapple. You take the seed, you peel it, you take the seeds out, you chop it up like pineapple, and you add pineapple juice, and you add a, it's a lot of sugar. That's why I don't make it anymore. And lemon juice. And then when you eat it, it tastes like pineapple. I hope I answered your question. I'm a first generation canner in my family. I plan on teaching my children. Amen. Funny story, I actually did out my two weeks in to start my own business. What type of business butterfly effects? We all try to help each other and patronize each other. I would add coconut, palm sugar, raw sugar, and honey, and give up the white sugar. Very good main course encouragement. Yes, ma'am. I use a lot of uh, honey in mine if I got to have something sweet. Homestead, heart pressure, can, yellow squash. She has a video. Yes, like I said, I'm, I'm not saying that you can't. I'm just telling you what those uh, agencies says. Thanks, Michelle. We need to figure out if the automate can or work on flat surface stoves. Yeah, you have to check with the manufacturer. Thanks for helping other people start their gardens. I have some agave nectar. Because when I was vegan, I, I have some right there in the cabinet. I like it, too. But you got to be careful with those when you start making jams and jellies and all that kind of stuff. That's the only thing. Yes, there are a lot of canners that work with induction cooktops. You have to check with the canner manufacturer. The canning book again is right here. This is my favorite one. I got a real old, old one. Can everybody see that? I got this right on Amazon. It has a, a lot of recipes for water bath canning and a lot of recipes for pressure canning. Southern California can grow all year round. Right. Thank you, Miss B. Washington. That means a lot. Somebody, uh, Moo Moo Ma, uses homemade sugar from my dad's garden in Cuba. How blessed. I'm growing sugar cane. Recommended pot for water bath canning. Thoughts on stainless steel? A waste of money, in my opinion. Because you, you don't you don't water bath for long periods of time, so inexpensive aluminum one is just fine. And if you don't have that, you can use a stock pot. Sometimes in the show. Sometimes when I'm in the real groove and I got a whole lot of pressure can, I pressure can right in the stock pot. But I have to put a, a, a dish or uh, towels or something at the bottom of it so that the jars don't hit the bottom of the pot. But you can get that whole water bath canner on Amazon or Walmart with the whole kits and everything. It's very inexpensive. The only thing I'm missing, I don't know where I did it, it's in a grow room somewhere, is the little magnet thing that picks up the lids. I can't find mine. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for taking time out of your comfy seat. Yes, Sierra says so she bought hers uh, from Walmart for $25. They're Deb Jackson, you're just like me, retired from the beauty shop, so I hope to grow all year and can. How long can you keep your canned food? Ball says 18 months. 
but I keep mine for several years. Last week I showed them, and it's still here. I'll be right back. Last week I showed everybody the green beans that I canned in 2016. And you can see they're perfect. Nothing wrong with them. But legally I'm supposed to say 18 months because that's what the manufacturer uh, recommends. But you can keep it longer. As long as you pop it open, and I, I demonstrated and I opened one that was several years old and you can hear that pop when you take it out. I gave up pressure canning for a ninja. Now we are behind pressure canning supplies. Mm -hmm. By the way, they don't have any more Presto or the inexpensive pressure canners on Amazon or Walmart. Some of the canning groups that I've been told me that they had to go to Ace Hardware to, in small towns, little local places uh, to get them because people have bought them out online. Another thing is they have gone up in the uh, supplies. When Lad Farmer told us about, you know, impending crises and getting everything all ready, I bought a whole lot of canning jars and lids. So they have gone up on the price. Even on eBay, they've gone up. Me and the TV crew sitting here talk about how child support, oh Lord Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Talking about child support, gonna have to wait to get paid to after show again if we were alive over. I'm in tears at this boy. That's my kid. I'm sorry, Nick. All right, Woman Woman Homestead says, My Jersey, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I've heard of that store. Has cases on sale or on $14.99. Yes, Amazon is on. I told you, because I'm in, I'm in about five canning groups. I'm in one that's called Rebel Canners, and these people are taking a water bath canner, and they can chicken and things like that for six and seven hours. I mean, to me, not that I'm judging anybody, but all the energy that you're spending on that, because where I live, gas is very expensive, gas bill, natural gas. I'd rather just knock it out in a pressure canner in 90 minutes with meat. There's nothing in a pressure can that you can for over 90 minutes, unless you're uh, in a very high altitude. Oh, by the way, what's the name of that site again? The National Something for Preservation? Somebody type it again. Everybody need to write that down because some areas you have to water bath can for a little bit longer because of your altitude. Okay? Going to do buck lids, buck lids. Woman to woman, I got mine from eBay. I got a hundred uh, lids and um, what do you call these things? I can't even think tonight. Caps. I got a hundred for twenty five dollars off eBay. There was a company. I think they were using the, the jars for um, bar drinks, so they didn't need the lids and the caps, and so they were selling them at a hundred. And now they've gone up to. $30. They still had some on last night when I looked. Okay. Okay, so did everybody get the information? The National Center for Food Preservation. Thank you, Elizabeth. National NCFP. NCFP. National Center for Food Preservation. This is good information, so you all need to write that down. And always check for safe measures to can um, at that website. Gooseberry Homestead, I've been watching you while I garden. Awesome, awesome. I don't, I don't know what that name Blaine's is. Is that a department store? Somebody got a pressure canner. Yeah. I know a lot of people are trying to use these instant pots, but every gardening, pardon me, every canning group that I'm a member of, they say don't use an instant pot 
to pressure can. Tractor Supply has a 16 quart Presto. All right, ninety-nine dollars. But the but the place the big places like Walmart and Amazon, those are the ones have sold out of the inexpensive canners. Now they do have the All American canner, and I think I mentioned last week what I did was when I knew I was retiring, I bought the Cadillac of everything that I could get my hands on because I knew my income was going to change drastically. And hey, Original Turtle, good to see you. Uh, yeah, so I, I just got everything. I got the uh, nine tray Excalibur uh, dehydrator, and we're going to talk about that too. I'm going to be doing a series of dehydration on all the herbs and spices and stuff that we grow, ginger, turmeric, basil, rosemary, you name it, I do it. Okay. Okay, if there aren't any questions, I want to thank you all for coming to my live. Do me a favor and hit the like button if you haven't already. Could you dry can food in a water bath canner? Never heard of that, guys. I've never heard of that. In fact, I, I haven't done any dry canning. But there are Facebook groups that do go into that. I'm sure there's probably some people on e, uh, uh, YouTube that do it too. Okay, again, I want to thank everybody for coming. Next Monday is Memorial Day. So we will be doing a live demonstration of pressure canning next Tuesday night at the same time. We love you too. Thank you, Seed to Soul. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope I helped somebody today. And I want you to know that God loves you and I love you too. And it's going to take a while uh, before they put the live chat um, dialogue. I guess that's because I'm new when I uh, publish this video. Thank you, Essie. Thank you, Kelly Merrill. Thank you, Angela Bowden. Thank you, Game Nerd Mom. Thank you, Moo Moo. It takes a while to load it, but it, they'll be there in the morning. Thank you, Miss Diva Jones. Yes, Homestead Heart did candy with the vacuum seal. She is wonderful. I told her I want to be her when I grow up. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Lolita. Thank you, Talita Cafe, 360 Cafe. Thank you, Claus and World. You all take care. I'm going to sign off now. All right. Love you. Bye, guys. I think I'm supposed to hit the X here.